In this retreat, the practice we are doing here is called Foundations of Mindfulness, Satipatthana. It means setting up of mindfulness or firmly establish mindfulness. So when we practice mindfulness, when we set up the foundations of mindfulness, it is also called vipassana. Satipatthana may be wider in range than vipassana. Sometimes we use Sadipatana and Vipassana synonymously. Who needs this practice of Sadipatana or Vipassana? Vipassana is to purify the diseases of our mental defilements. It is used to purify our minds of mental defilements, Gilesa. Since we all people have mental defilements, all people need to practice vipassana. We all need to practice vipassana, Siddhipatthana. But if we have overcome or eradicated mental defilements and our minds have begun totally pure, do we need to practice mindfulness? More specifically, after we have become arahants. Do we need to practice mindfulness? An arahant is described as one who has done what is to be done regarding the eradications of mental defilements. But The Buddha said that Arahants also practice mindfulness. Even after you become an Arahant, you could stay practice mindfulness or you should stay practice mindfulness. In one discourse, Buddha taught his disciple to encourage those who have come to the dispensation lately or newly, the newcomers, Buddha said, should be encouraged to practice the four foundations of mindfulness. And Buddha said, those who are new monks, not long gone forth, who have come but recently to this teaching and discipline, they should be encouraged, they should be introduced to, and they should be established in the cultivation of the four foundations of mindfulness. So newcomers and new monks and new meditators should be encouraged to practice of the four foundations of mindfulness. 
we should say to them like this, practice Kaya Nupasana. Practice body contemplation in the body, ardent, clearly comprehending, single-minded, with a serene heart and a collected and concentrated mind for knowing the body as it truly is. This is for Kaya Nupasana, this is for body contemplation, for feeling contemplation, Practice feeling, contemplation in the feeling, ardent, clearly comprehending, single-minded, with a serene heart and collected, and a concentrated mind, for knowing the feeling as they truly are. For Chaitanya Upasana, or consciousness, contemplation. Practice consciousness, contemplation in the consciousness. Ardent, clearly comprehending, single-minded, with a serene heart and a collected and concentrated mind for knowing the consciousness as it truly is. For the Dhamma objects, Dhamma Nupasana, practice Dhamma contemplation in the Dhamma, ardent, clearly comprehending, single-minded, with, with a serene heart, and collected and concentrated mind for the knowing, for knowing the Dharma as they truly are. So you should encourage to newcomers and new meditators to practice the four foundations of mindfulness. Here, Buddha said that the existing meditators should encourage new practitioner, new meditators to practice the four foundations of mindfulness. And ask them to be ardent clearly comprehending. So we must encourage them to make sustained and intense effort. Encourage them to gain insight knowledge into the true nature of Namarupa. Encourage them to gain what is called Kandika Samadhi, momentary concentration. The moment you hit properly the object, concurrently note it, <clears throat> and momentary concentration, Knika Samadhi, you gain. In some cases, you may encourage them to practice mindfulness as Samatha meditation and to get Upachara Samadhi, Nevahood concentration, and Jhana concentration. What is the purpose? The purpose is for knowing the body as it truly is. 
the practice of mindfulness is to understand kaya, vedana, chaita, and dhamma, the body, the feeling, the mind, and the dhamma objects, or simply objects as they truly are. When a meditator practices mindfulness meditation, he or she first gets what is called Kandika Samadhi, momentary concentration. Your mind is on the objects only and is not distracted. After getting the momentary concentration, you begin to see the Namarupa, Mind and Meta clearly or phenomena clearly and then their conditionality and they are arising and disappearing and so on. So when meditators see the rising and disappearing of the Namarupa, he or she come to see that these Namarupa are impermanent and unsatisfactory and no soul or insubstantial or these Namarupa are out of their control. Seeing these Namarupa as impermanent, unsatisfactory, and insubstantial, it is said to be knowing as it truly is. So the new meditators, newcomers should be encouraged to practice the four foundations of mindfulness in order to understand the four objects as they truly are, or to understand that these Namarupa are impermanent, unsatisfactory, and insubst insubstantial. And then Buddha said, also those meditators who are in the higher training but not have not yet attained the goals and strive after the highest peace, they do dwell ardent and clear comprehending, single-minded and with a serene heart and a concentrated and collected mind practicing contemplation on the body for the full understanding of the body for the full understanding of the feeling for the full understanding of consciousness and for the full understanding of the Dhamma objects. <laughs> A person who has reached the lower three stages of enlightenment is called a trainee. Since he or she has not yet finished the training, only he becomes an Arahan is he said to have finished his training? Those person, the enlightened person, not the worldly, are called trainees or sikha. Even after they had attained the first 
stage, second stage, or third stage of enlightenment. The practicing monks, the meditators, continue to practice mindfulness meditation. They make effort and they try to get inside knowledge into the true nature of Nama Rupa again. But this time, the purpose is for the full understanding. Full understanding must be understood fully. Full understanding has three levels. The first level is the understanding of individual characteristic of the objects. And the second level is the understanding of the common characteristics or general characteristics of Nama Rupa. And the third level is abandonment of wrong view after correctly understanding the common characteristic or general characteristics of all conditioned phenomena. So whenever you find the word full understanding used in the discourses, you must understand it to mean the three levels of understanding. The first level is full understanding of individual characteristics. When you observe something, you will not fail to see it clearly and you will not fail to see its features that is natural. So when you practice meditation, you try to be mindful of the object and if you get momentary concentration, then you begin to see it clearly. When you see the object clearly, you also see what it is, what characteristic or what mark it has. For example, you are watching your mind, Nama, your mind goes to the object. Your mind goes to this object. Your mind goes to that object. Actually, the mind does not go anywhere. But it seems to go to the objects. Your mind seems to be bent towards the object. That bending to the objects or going to the object or simply taking the objects is the characteristic of the mind. That is Namana Lekhana. When you observe the mind closely, You see that your mind is something that bends towards the object. Your mind is something that goes towards the object. Your mind is something that takes the object. If you understand that, you are understanding its individual characteristic, a characteristic peculiar to it and not share with any 
other object. It is the first level of the full understanding or first level of the correct understanding of the object. Sometimes you have pain, unpleasant sensation, and you watch your pain, and you will come to see that pain is the experience of undesirable sensation of touch. Pain is the experience of the undesirable, tangible data. So the characteristics of pain is just the experience of undesirable, tangible data. Then you watch your air elements. You sit and note the rising and falling of the abdomen or walking, etc. You watch, you capture the air elements. When you watch the air elements, you will see that the air elements has the characteristic of distending or expanding or support. These are called individual characteristics. They are the marks of the individual objects. After you see the individual characteristics, you see that they arise dependent upon some condition. There is nothing which arises not depending on any condition. So when you see something, you may understand that because there is something to be seen, there is seeing process, there is seeing consciousness. If there is nothing to be seen, there is no seeing process. When you stretch your hands because there is the intention to stretch, there is stretching. If the intention is not there, there will be no stretching. So stretching is conditioned by your desire to stretch. Stretching does not come by itself or stretching. is not created by any deities, but it is conditioned by the mind. You see that everything that arises has something or everything arises has things as its condition. So you see the conditionality of things that belong to the first level or first stage of correct understanding. After seeing the conditionality of Namarupa, you begin to see that the objects arise and disappear. Whatever object you keep your mind on, you see that it arises and disappear immediately. 
actually no object exists for even two consecutive moments. The moment it arises and at the end, at its end, that object disappears. And then in its place, there is another object. In this way, the old objects disappear and the new object takes its place. So when you watch the object of this present moment, you will also see that that object appears and then disappear. And when you are watching your thoughts, you know that some thoughts appear and then disappear immediately. For example, the sounds of the clock, it just struck and then disappear. If you pay close attention, you will not fail to see that these things just arise and disappear. When you see that these things arise and disappear, you see that they are impermanent because something that despair is impermanent. If it is to be permanent, it must last forever, but there is nothing that lasts forever. Actually, everything in our world is impermanent. And this impermanence is common to all objects you observe, whether it is mind or matter, whether it is nama or rupa, whether it is your thoughts or your sensation or rising and falling of the abdomen or in and out, etc. Everything in the world is impermanent. All these phenomena share these characteristics, that is, they come and go, and they are impermanent. When you see the impermanence of Namarupa, you also see their suffering nature. That means being constantly oppressed by rising and disappearing. So objects always come and go, come and go. You see this when you observe objects. Whatever objects you keep your mind on, you see that that object is oppressed by arising and disappearing. That means it arises and disappears. When you see the impermanent nature of things, You also see the unsatisfactory nature, or you also see the dukkha nature of Namarupa. Dukkha nature means being constantly oppressed by arising and disappearing. When you see the impermanent nature and dukkha nature, of Namarupa, 
you also see the another nature of things. Another nature means you have no control over mind and matter. You have no control over them. They come and go by their own free will. And so you have no control. They are just phenomena rolling on and on and on and on. Also, they are unsubstantial. There is no substance in them. There is no permanent entity in them. They are not reliable. They are not dependable. So just by paying close attention, by observing, you come to see these three characteristics. They are called common characteristics or general characteristics of all conditioned phenomena. Anything that is conditioned has these three characteristics. Number one, it is impermanent. Number two, it is constantly oppressed by arising and disappearing. And number three, it is substantial. So three characteristics, follow me. It is impermanent. It is impermanent. It is constantly oppressed by arising and disappearing. It is constantly oppressed by arising and disappearing. And it is insubstantial. And it is insubstantial. So if you understand these three characteristics, you reach the second stage in the full understanding. You reach the second stage in the correct understanding. After understanding the three characteristics, the next stage is abandoning the wrong view about Namarupa. Before you see the, these three characteristics, before you see the objects clearly, you think that Namarupa are permanent. The view that things on Namarupa are permanent is a wrong view. The view that things are satisfactory is a wrong view. The view that everything is under your control is a wrong view. When you see the three characteristics, when you reach the second level of correct understanding, you are able to abandon this wrong view. So you no longer see Namarupa as permanent, as beautiful, as satisfactory, and as substantial. So meditators are able to discard this wrong view by seeing the three characteristics of all conditioned phenomena. It is a third level or highest level of your correct understanding. So we all must understand these three kinds of correct understanding. 
whenever we come across the term full understanding or correct understanding in the discourses. For the trainees or for those who have attained the first stage, second stage and third stage of enlightenment, the practice of the four foundations of mindfulness is for the full understanding of the objects. Then what about the Arahants? Also those monks who are noble ones, taint free, they have no doubt, who have lived a holy life to the end, who have accomplished their tasks, lay down the burden, attain to the goal, destroying the facts of existence, and liberated and perfect wisdom, they too dwell ardent and clearly comprehending, single-minded with serene face, serene heart and a concentrated and collected mind practicing body contemplation on the body being unfettered by the body. Here Buddha did not give us any purpose. Buddha just said the Arham practice foundations of mindfulness. Being unfettered by the body, by feeling, by consciousness, and by Dhamma objects. Arahan is a person who has eradicated all mental defilements. Arahan has no attachment, Arahan has no hate, no mental defilements. So he practiced body contemplation, Kaya Nupasana, feeling con contemplation, Vedana Nupasana, consciousness contemplation, Chaita Nupasana, and Dhamma contemplation, Dhamma Nupasana, without being fettered by the body. That means unattached to the body, unattached to the feeling, unattached to the consciousness, and unattached to the Dhamma. Even an Arahan is described here as practicing mindfulness. So mindfulness meditation is for all people, not just those people who have mental defilements. It is for all people. In another discourse, Venerable Sariputra said, Venerable Sariputra said, Arahans practice foundations of mindfulness for the sake of enjoyment, uh, for the sake of uh, enjoying bliss in this very life and for the sake of being mindful all the time. So two purposes. Raham practice for Deta Dhamma Sukha Vihara for the sake of enjoying bliss in this very life and for the sake of Sati Samzinya being mindful all the time 
because of this Arham practice foundations of mindfulness. Although Arahans have no mental defilements, they stay experience bodily pain, sickness and others. But with the practice of mindfulness, Arahans can endure pain. Arahans can make pain bearable or they can make pain not disturb their minds. So it is a kind of release even from bodily pain when they practice mindfulness meditation. At one time, the fully enlightened Buddha was severely ill. So Buddha practiced vipassana. With the practice of vipassana, Buddha was able to get rid of that illness. So when you get to the higher stage of vipassana, you may expect to get rid of some illness of the body. Also, an Arahan who always practice mindfulness is able to get into Samapati quickly. So those who do not constantly practice mindfulness after they become Arahans are not able to get into Samapati easily when disturbed by some work or some concern. So even the Arahans practice mindfulness meditation to experience the bliss of emancipation even in this life, Deita Dhamma Sukha Vihara, and also to be mindful and clearly comprehending Sati Sambhajasanya always so that they can get into the plasma body with ease. So mindfulness practice and serious practice of mindfulness is for all people. Buddha again said at the end that those meditators who have come to the dispensation newly or those who are newcomers should be encouraged to establish themselves in the four foundations of mindfulness. That means to encourage them to practice the four foundations of mindfulness. So do not think that you practice four foundations of mindfulness only before you get rid of mental defilements. Even if you are able to, if you are able to get rid of your mental defilements, you still need to practice mindfulness meditation. So mindfulness meditation is for all times. Mindfulness meditation is for all people. Both for those who have not yet attained any enlightenment and for those who have reached the highest stage of enlightenment or for those who have eradicated all mental defilements. So this meditation is for all times, for all people, for everybody. So what we want to emphasize in the term full understanding 
whenever you see the term who understanding you understand in this way understanding really means seeing their individual characteristics and seeing their common characteristics or general characteristics and abandoning wrong views through the understanding of the common characteristics. The first level of that understanding is called Nyata Parinya Full understanding of uh, full understanding as what is known and the second level is Tirana Parinya the full understanding of investigation but investigation means not just investigating, but investigating and understanding. And the third level of full understanding is the full understanding of abandonment. It is Pahana Varenya. Nyata Varenya, Tirana Varenya, and Pahana Barinya. We understand step by step. Can you follow me? Nyata Barinya. Correct understanding as what is known. Tirana Barinya. Correct understanding is investigation. Bhana Parinya. Correct understanding is abandonment. So, Nyata Parinya, Tirana Parinya, and Bhana Parinya. First, you understand as what is known. And you correct understanding as investigation, and correct understanding as abandonment. So full understanding or correct understanding does not mean just understanding, but also abandonment of your wrong view through the full understanding of the common characteristics of all conditioned phenomena. We have to stop our discourse for today. May you practice well. May may you have understanding of what is known. Nyata Parinya. May you have understanding as investigation. May you have Tirana Parinya. And may you abandon all your wrong views. That is Pana Parinya. By practicing Vipassana meditation, by observing every phenomena, occurring at the six and doors, by noting, rising, falling, sitting, standing, stretching, bending, continuously and meticulously, may all yogis be liberated from all suffering, may all meditators realize the real peace in the very near future.